you know that we're seeing now an essential change in the society, St. Pius X and its battle. And we have to remind of a simple catechism that uh, the priests, and now we find even the conservative priests and the conservative members of the society saying, well, the world is so bad now that Vatican II is a dead letter. Vatican II is uh, no longer the problem. That uh, Vatican II is a dead letter. Vatican II is no longer the problem. And that uh, the problem is the misunderstanding of what comes from the council. Well, what is the conclusion of all that? There's another, there's a principle, logic will out. We don't want logic to come to its conclusion. If you take a snowball and you roll it down a mountain in the winter time, at the end of the winter time, it's a little bitty snowball and you start to roll it. You don't want it to become huge. You don't want it to turn into an avalanche. You don't want it to disturb the rocks and make a big avalanche, but that's what happens. You, you only wanted a small little snowball to start rolling down the mountain. You didn't want it to grow. You didn't want it to cause the damage of an avalanche, but that's what must happen. And so likewise, right now, we're finding that the reason of tradition, the reason why we stand for our faith against the modern era has been taken from us. And we have only the habit without the reason for the habit. We, are, we know that we're supposed to be traditional Catholics, and we are traditional, but we don't know why we're traditional. We know that we're supposed to hate the devil, but we don't know why we hate the devil. We know we're supposed to follow God, but we don't know why we follow God. And, that, and then when people speak to us, they say, well, you know what, the problem of the world is so now far gone. We have, the Pope, Pope Francis is telling us that we can give communion to the divorce and remarry. Even the modernists are against that. Even the conservative modernists, the conservatives, are against that. And then they were talking about homosexual marriages, and the conservatives are against that. And if we look closely at Vatican II, we have to recognize heretical. So of course there's problems in the council. But the problems are the interpretation of the council, not the Corrected. But the council. Now, then, what is going to happen? Why we are where we are? Why do we have to have mass in the house? Church. The modern church, it calls itself a conciliar church. It has ecumenism, a new teaching which is error and heresy. And this error and heresy leads souls to hell. So now what are we saying? Well, there's still good people in the modern church. And of course there are. There are good people in the modern church. There are good people in the Novus Ordo parishes. There are good people in the conservative parishes and in the liberal parishes. There's good people everywhere. So if there are good people there, there must be something good in that church. No, the goodness is in God. The goodness is in his creation. The goodness is in his true church that he founded for all men to belong to. The goodness is in his gospel. And all goodness is related to whatever good is because it comes from God's creation, because it comes from God's church, comes from God's gospel. And all the false doctrines are a foreign source. They are not from God, therefore they are the cause of evil. And we say, who believes in error, a man that believes a heresy, May still think so that the error and the heresy is not so bad. Then why am I fighting it? So we have a situation where the average traditional Catholic today, he knows he's traditional. He knows he doesn't like the new mass. He knows he doesn't like the modern dress. He knows, knows he doesn't like the modern behavior. He knows he doesn't like the modern direction of the world. But he doesn't know precisely what he does like. 
And he doesn't know precisely what he does believe. And so therefore, what happens? His children are going to wander away from God. And he himself is going to wander away from God. So now they say, we are still against modernism, but there's no modernism in the council. We're still against ecumenism, but there's no ecumenism in the council. We're still against error and heresy of all type, but there's no error, no heresy in the council. The council is, speaks many errors. The council speaks many heresies, and particularly the central heresy, of the, the synthesis of all heresies, modernism. And in it is contained all heresies, ecumenism, ecclesiality, religious liberty. Many heresies communicated that are contrary to the, the universal teaching of the church. But now we say, no, there's no heresy in the council. You can read a Catholic interpretation. You can find a Catholic interpretation in each of the passages. They're ambiguous, but they're not heretical. They're, not, they're dangerous, but they're not bad. Well, if the council is not heretical, and the council is not bad, then the council should not be fought against. The council must then be accepted. We have to decide in 2017, the decision is still there. Do we belong to the Church of the Council, Vatican Council II, 1962 to 1965? Or do we belong to the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, founded by Him 2,000 years ago, and in fact founded when He created Adam, in the original form, in the Old Testament? But that church, it was from the beginning of time, do we belong to that church? Or do we belong to the Church of the Council? And so they say, yes, there are some differences. But they're not heresies. This is how the modernists destroyed the Catholic faith over the last 150 years. You cannot believe heresies. If you believe heresies, you're committing to mortal sin, you're going to hell. But if it's an error, you can believe it. You can believe it. What is the seventh commandment? Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. What is more serious than bearing false witness against the neighbor, bearing false witness against God? We learned about the seventh commandment, the seventh commandment, that to any lie is an intrinsically evil act and can never be justified. What is what happens in the, what is happening right now in Catholic tradition? Catholics are beginning to believe. As long as I don't believe in a specific, explicit heresy, I am okay. The church condemns this over 2,000 years, particularly in the Syllabus of Errors in 1864, in Lamentabili Sane, the new syllabus of 1907 of St. Pius X, in Bishenit Dominici Gregis, and in Prestancia Scripturae of, of, of 1907, where St. Pius X says, you are obliged in conscience to save your soul, to accept all the teachings contained in Bishendi Divinity Gregis, and to reject all of those things condemned as modernism. And those who, are even, who even favor these heresies are all excommunicated. That's what he said. Those who even favor it. The most severe excommunication given by St. Pius X. Because souls are damned by lies. Souls are damned by errors. So now we have a situation in the church where the traditional Catholic is beginning to say, as long as it's not an explicit heresy, as long as it's not an explicit heresy where it says Jesus Christ is not true God, Jesus Christ is not true man. You ran into a case recently where the Vatican II document says, says in the Vatican II, that the Muslims worship the same God that we worship. This is a heresy. They said, well, no, it's not a heresy. Because if you take it in the light of other parts of the text, it's not a heresy. Now, what is the God, what is the Muslim of the gods worship? He is called Allah. He is not one in three persons. And the Muslims themselves explicitly say that Jesus Christ is not God. They say he's the son of God. He's not God. He's just a man. So the God of the Arians does not include the Father, nor the Son, nor the Holy Ghost. Or rather, the God of the, of the Muslims. And the God of the Muslims, who are the children of Abraham physically, 
They are the children of Abraham physically, but they do not worship the God of Abraham, who is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. They don't worship that God. It is a dogma of the faith that the one God is Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Called in the Old Testament, the God of Abraham, the Father, the God of Isaac, the Son, the God of Jacob, the Holy Ghost. And this God, who is the only true God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, whoever does not worship that God is damned. He is the only true God. Now we have inside of the Vatican II documents an explicit statement amongst many, many others that the God of Abraham is the God that the <coughs> Muslims worship, the same merciful God who will be our judge, no, the God of the Muslims is Allah, and he is a devil. The God of Muslims is not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The God of the Muslims did not become man and die on the cross for our sins. The God of the Muslims is not the Holy Ghost and the, the, the giver of life in the Holy Roman Catholic Church. The God of the Muslims was not enter into your baptism. The God of the Muslims is well outside of a soul that is a friend of the true God. The God of the Muslims is Satan. The God of the Muslims is evil. And then there will be an argument. But it is not... When Dignitatis Humanae says, Muslims is the same as our God. It's not requiring you to believe that. Do you know that the abortion law does not require you to have an abortion? No man has ever been required to have an abortion since the law came into being. And no woman has been required to have an abortion since the law came into being. Man cannot have an abortion because he cannot have children. But if a man believes an abortion is okay, that man is in the state of mortal sin. If a man accepts abortion as, as a legitimate way to remove a child from this world, he is a murderer in his heart. And he is guilty of the lie of accepting murder. And he is evil and an enemy of God. If he accepts divorce, he is an enemy of God. Even if he himself never becomes divorced. If it matters what we believe, and can you say that, well, it is, it, it, I'm not forcing you to have an abortion. No, the devil doesn't force you to have an abortion. He only wants you to accept that there is abortion. And then you have turned away from God. He only wants you to accept it. Therefore, when Vatican Council II says that Abraham, Abraham, the Muslims worship the same God of Abraham that Catholics worship, the same merciful God that shall judge us at the end of the world, when the Muslims, when the, when the Council says that, that statement is heretical. That statement is contrary to what you must believe in order to be saved. In order to be saved, you must believe that there is one God. And this God is one in three persons. And the Father is not the Son. And the Son is not the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is not the Son. And the Holy Ghost and the Son are not the Father. But these three are one and the same God. The creator of the universe. Three persons in one God who does not believe in these three persons, and that they are not three gods, but one God. They are not three holies, but one holy. They are not three just, but one just, and omnipotent, and so on. These cannot go to the kingdom of heaven, and do not belong to the true faith, and do not believe in the true God. Vatican Council II says that the Jews, and the modern Jews, and the Muslims worship the same God that we worship. Both Muslims and Jews, modern Jews, reject that Jesus Christ is God and reject the Blessed Trinity. This is heresy. Now what happens? We say, well, I still believe in the Blessed Trinity. But Vatican Council II can be taken in a true light. So now the child runs across a statement. I was told the other day, Mommy, that Abraham... The, the Jews and the Muslims worship the same God that we do since we all worship the God of Abraham. Well, there's some truth in that, son. There's some truth in that because, after all, even the council says that the God of the Muslims and the God of the Jews, because there's one God, and we know there's only one God, but they're making a mistake because they don't know that there are three persons in one God. 
And they don't know that Jesus Christ is God. But in fact, they do worship the same God. And when you say that, you lie. You speak in error. You speak in heresy. You speak contrary to the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now what happens is, we begin to say, well, the council is not a heresy. The council is not error. And even if we're only error, no one can deliberately believe in any error that is called a lie and that is intrinsically evil. Remember the great example of St. Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc was told to deny that St. Michael and the other saints appeared to her. This was not a heresy if she denied it. It was only a lie. And she then recanted and those so that she wouldn't be burned at the stake. Realizing that she made a grave mistake before God, she took back her signature. He says, no, I did really He listened to St. Michael. And the Blessed Virgin Mary referred to her that night. said, if you had stayed with that lie for fear of being burned at the stake, you would have lost your soul to be burning in hell. But instead she became St. Joan of Arc because she refused to lie. She refused to believe in error. The St. Michael the Archangel did appear to her. The voices of the saints did appear to her. She did listen to heaven when she, when she decided what should be done in battle. And she was working for God. And she did not lie. We find also that if you lie in court, you break an oath against the second commandment. You call God to witness that you did not see a murder when you did. You call God to witness about some lie in court. You go to hell for telling a lie. This lie is not a heresy. This lie is not an error against God. It's an error against the neighbor. Now the neighbor is so less important than God. To believe an error about the neighbor deliberately means eternal damnation and to losing one's soul. The sin of detraction. The sin of, uh, the sin of calumny. These are believing and spreading evil lies about the neighbor. When we believe these evil lies about the neighbor, we lose our souls when they're about serious matters. What about a lie about God? What about an error about God? This is a much more grave. And so what happens is that may, we, the children will learn that uh, to not believe the truth about God is unimportant. To believe the truth about your neighbor, that's important. But to believe the truth about God, that's not important. Vatican Council II has many teachings which are different than the teachings of the 2,000 years that came before it. Many teachings that are different than the teachings of the gospel. Now these teachings are being different. Either the gospel is right and Vatican II is wrong, or Vatican II is right and the gospel is wrong. We have no right to believe in something that's wrong. And if we discover that there are two different teachings, we must discover which one is the right teaching and follow it. And either it's a teaching of the gospel and the teaching of the saints down the last 2,000 years, or it's a teaching of the council. The modernists come in and they say, you only have to believe what is extraordinarily infallibly defined by the church. And that's very few things. Everything else is up for grabs. No, it's not. What the fathers teach unanimous, unanimously, what is contained in the sacred scripture, and it's plain and clear teaching, such as Abraham had two sons, such as all of the, the Egyptians were killed in the Red Sea when the Jews crossed it, such as the killing of the 40,000 soldiers of Sennacherib, such as the miracle, the various miracles contained in the Old and New Testament. All of the, the, the historical truths contained therein, every Catholic must believe, and if he does not believe them, he calls God a liar. And why does he believe them? Because God cannot deceive. When he speaks what's in the scripture, he speaks truth. And if someone speaks other than that, he speaks error. If he speaks it deliberately, he speaks a lie. And if we see the truth of Christ contained in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, in the Gospel, in the Scriptures, and in tradition, and we see a new doctrine contained in the Council, we must simply say, I reject the new doctrine. For St. Paul gave us the rule, if an angel of heaven teach you something different than what we have already taught you, let him be anathema. Is the new Gospel of Vatican II 
Is it the same as the old gospel? The simple answer is no. And what is the proof? Those who uphold the, the teachings of the council, those who stand by the council, they are enemies of the old teaching. They are enemies of the teachings of Christ. Ask them. Ask them about the teachings regarding ecumenism and the new mass. Ask them about religious liberty. Ask them. I've asked Catholic nuns. They once, once the sister tell me, how can you call yourself a Catholic and believe that the Catholic Church is the true church? I have never heard that in all my life. I was raised after Vatican II, and I learned that all churches have part to play with salvation. That's the teaching of the church I belong to, and you're saying the church teaches only salvation in the Catholic Church? That's crazy. So said a Catholic nun. She learned what Vatican II taught, that is salvation. That other religions can be a source of salvation, can be helps for salvation. Arsus Lefebvre says concerning that statement, that other religions can be a source of salvation. In the book they have uncrowned him, this is heresy. This is heresy. The other religions are not source of salvation. Now we first say, there's no heresy in the council, but I'm still against it. There, there's, there's, I'm still against it, but there's no heresy there. And there's a lot of good in the council, and madmen changed it. What's the next step? Well, what's the good in the council? Since there's no heresy in the council, that must not be that dangerous to read it. And if somebody says the council teaches, it may, must not be that bad. If they're truly saying what the council teaches, then it's not a heresy. And therefore, I can safely take many things the council teaches. And what happens? The slide away from the faith. We must understand the council teaches error. No Catholic can accept error. The council teaches heresy. No Catholic can accept heresy. What's the difference between grave heresy and error? The different place you get in hell, such as murder. If you murder someone that murdered your that, out of revenge, and if you murder your mother, then murdering your mother is far worse than murdering someone out of revenge. Murdering in cold blood is as far worse than murdering out of passion. But all murderers go to hell. Murderers don't find a place in heaven. And hence the church has a degree of sin. There is a grave sin of heresy, which is, of course, you go to hell for. There is a sin of believing in errors that are contrary to the teaching of the faith. The sin of believing in errors contrary to philosophy. And these are all sins. And those things that we believe that are offensive to pious ears, and these are also sins. And, they, and when we believe these errors, we're guilty of sin. And we're obliged in conscience to believe what the church promotes to us as the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, then and what, the, what the church has always taught. Vatican Council II is error. Vatican Council II is heresy. And we are finding now conservative priests and conservative faithful within the Society of St. Pius X, who five years ago would have said, I agree with you in the resistance. There's no heresy in the council. It's just that Bishop Lay, who knows there's heresy in the council, he knows there's error in the council. He, does, he knows that, but he's just trying to make a practical agreement. Now, of course there's no error in the council. Of course there's no heresy in the council. But we still don't like it because it's, it's dangerous. The next stage, well, there are many good things in the council that we all have to accept. And then why do we accept the teachings of Christ? And if you say that the council is evil, and you say the council has led souls to hell, and you say the council is not of God, and you say that the council teaches error, and you say the council teaches heresy, and even now in 2017, the church of the council is reading souls on a primrose path to hell and preparing for the coming of the Antichrist, you're insane. It used to be what everyone as a Catholic believes. Whoever is a Catholic follows tradition. Whoever is a Catholic follows what has been handed down. And we find in 1960 or 1965, during these years, they stopped handing down. And the cardinals got together, and what was the first thing they did, Pope John XXIII did? He took the schemata that was prepared for the council, and he threw it away in the first week. That's the first thing he did. He threw it away, and they brought in a new teaching. And they discussed the new teaching, and they fought over the new teaching. And the old was thrown out in the first week, never to be brought back again by that council. From the beginning of that council in 1962, it was a council about new teaching, different from the old. 
a council about changing the church, a council about changing doctrine, and then the consequence of that council was that all of morals and all of the liturgy and all prayers would also be changed. And that's what happened. And so, if we want to fight against the new mass, fight against the new prayers, fight against the new immorality, then we must fight against the cause of the new mass, the cause of the new prayers, the cause of the new immorality, which is the new teaching that was inserted truly into Vatican Council II, to, so that a church that used to be called Catholic now calls itself the Church of the Council. That council is still alive and well in 2017, still bringing souls on the path to hell in 2017, still our chief enemy within the church of 2017, and we have to fight against those errors and try to pull those errors out of souls so that they can go to the kingdom of heaven. In any case, stand firm with the truth and against the errors, not against the spirit of the errors, but against the errors, and hold the truth at all costs. God bless you all.